Hey, what's up? This is Corey Glenn, and I wanted to do just a very quick video today showing a new feature that I found in Mesh Mixer after, you know, six, seven years of playing with this thing that uh, has just made my life so much easier. And so let me uh, put out there what what's the issue I'm trying to solve, first of all. So when I'm making our, our guides from the lab, you know, we, we have to turn this, uh, just the raw guide tubes exported from Blue Sky Plan into more or less a, a bar type structure. So historically what I'd have to do is, you know, import some kind of a primitive shape like this and then spend a bunch of time trying to, you know, size this down and then position it and then stretch it and then inevitably you would impinge into the internal of the tube and you'd have to uh, trim on it. Now this, this does work and it's a very clean workflow but it's a lot of effort. Um, so this is something that I recently learned about and uh, shout out to one of my partners here at the lab, Ben Kellum, is, is who actually figured this out. Um, but it's this obscure little function called tube handle. All right, so let me give you an example. You can see here what I've already done. These are really nice connections that have been made between uh, the guide bar and the, the indexing pieces, how this stacks on. Uh, so these would be the magnet housings. But let me just show you here an example. So the way I like to do these magnet housings is I'll get about half of the top. So just using the select tool. And then I'll look from the bottom and you can kind of see I go about halfway down on the uh, lingual portion of it as well. Something like that. And then I just need to select the other part that I want to connect to it. Okay, so notice here as I'm doing this, I'm not rolling over the edges. The reason that's happening is because I've got the uh, crease angle set to pretty high. So what that means is, for example here, you know how the, the select tool will bleed over but when you've got the high crease angle, it's going to not roll over a edge threshold, which is really nice because, for example, if I'm doing, uh, you know, something like this where I want to quickly select all this, granted I could double click the face groups, but uh, this allows you to not have to have near as much precision. Okay, now I didn't really mean to select that, so here's what I'll do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit smooth, so B. And now I can clear that because really these are the two connections that I want to make. This base group, this base group. So once I've got those two selected where I want to connect, I go to Edit, Tube Handle. And there you have it. And so it really kind of just takes the edges of those boundaries you've selected and finds the closest distance to the other area that you've selected and then connects it. And uh, it's a really clean, easy way to do this. I mean, this has saved me mountains of time. So I'll just do one more here and uh, call it quits for this video. So here we're going to select right there. Got all that selected. I will always, to make this smoother like you see right here, I'll always go ahead and hit O for optimize boundary and then B to smooth the boundary. All right, so now there are smooth edges on this, and now I'm going to go to Edit, Tube Handle. All right, and there you have it. So that's actually how I connected the tubes to one another, is by just doing a tube handle and then connecting it out to my indexing parts. Again, this just saves me a ton of time. So uh, hopefully you'll find some use for that. 